Praise the Lord, saints. All my church people said, praise the Lord. Um, if you grew up in old school church like I did. But welcome back to Conversations with Carrie. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, I just felt like the Lord put this on my heart. And it was something that I've been dealing with. So I was like, let me go on and share it with my people real quick. Um, the Lord's just been dealing with me around hope. Hope gets my expectations up. And then when my expectations are not met, I'm disappointed. And I don't like feeling disappointed. So I figured, well, you know, there's certain things I know that Lord's going to do because he's promised. Or, you know, I just feel like let me just, you know, kind of follow along and not hope. Because if I don't hope, then I don't have to face the disappointment that comes along with it. But y'all, that's that's nowhere to, no way to live. Um, so I've been really studying hope and I wanted to come on here and share a little bit around what I've uh, what the Lord has revealed to me around hope. So first, you know, I'm going to take y'all old school and give y'all a little definition of hope. Hope is a desire and expectation centered in God for something to happen, um, even a feeling of trust. And I was like, well, Lord, I trust you, you know, and I realized, though, that my hope was starting to wane a little bit. Not the same thing as faith, because it's like, Lord, you know, I know that you're capable. I know who you are. Um, but I was just like, do I do I hope for it? Because if you don't do it, then I'm disappointed in you. And, you know, we're taught, don't be disappointed in the Lord, you know, or I, I, I think we're taught those things, but we're human and we have human reactions. So that's why I wanted to take you to the story of Sarah and Abraham, because that is a perfect example of somebody who had human reactions and made some dumb decisions. So let me let me start from the beginning. Let me let me start from the very beginning so you understand like where like a little more background about Sarah. So Abraham was given a promise from God and he was saying God told him, "Listen, you're going to be a father of many nations." Now keep in mind Abraham and Sarah did not have any kids at this time. But God made him a promise and so he was like, "Just leave your leave your family I need me leave your father's land and I'm going to show you somewhere to go. I ain't going to tell you exactly where you'll find out along the way. I'll show you. And so Abraham's like, okay, I'm going to be obedient to the Lord's call and I'm going to get up and go where I'm supposed to go. And now Sarah at this time is 65 years old. So think about it. She's probably set in her way. She's probably like, we got a comfortable life here. We good to go. And all of a sudden her husband's like, yeah, the Lord's called me out here. I don't know where though, but he's called me out. So come on, let's go. And her being a faithful, submitted wife, she was like, okay, let me go. I'm going to go with my husband. I'm going to believe the, what the Lord told him. And so much happens along the way. They face a famine. Um, Sarah was fine, y'all, because at 65, uh, Egyptians actually wanted to take her and, and make her a wife for uh, Pharaoh. So you know she was fine. 65, child, come on. That well water was doing all kinds of things. So, but anyway, so she's, you know, all this stuff that they're facing along the way, and at the same time, God is still promising Abraham saying like, yes, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And for those of us who grew up in children's church, um, Abraham had many sons, many sons had father Abraham, if, if you remember that. <laughs> but so she's like, okay, Lord's making all these promises to my husband, but your girl is barren. She, they had not had kids. So at this point, she's probably like, she had probably given up hope that she was going to have kids. And as the Lord is promising her these things, um, she gets older in age. I think this was at maybe 25 years later at this point. And the Lord confirms his promise to Abraham. And he's like, yes, I am going to give you kids. I'm going to make you, I'm going to provide an heir and your descendants will be more than the, the stars in the sky. But I, I'm sure she's probably like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and help this situation out. And I think this is where Sarah gets the bad rep. Because we hear about her taking her maiden, um, Hagar, and giving her to Abraham to sleep with and saying like, oh, well, I'll just bear kids through her. And people are always like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe she would do that. That is such a dumb idea. I want you to think about it though. Sarah had been hoping <laughs> for over 25 years. 25 years. Some of us can't even go a month. Some of us can't go a year. You know, 2020 jack things up and well, all of us are ready to just, you know, throw things out the window. She, this was 25 years at this point that she had been waiting and waiting and hoping. And uh, you know what? Actually, she probably was like, okay, it's probably going to occur in some other way because it ain't coming through me. I'm old. She was looking at it with human eyes 
And isn't that what we always do? We take our circumstance and we look at the reality of it, not thinking about the truth that God told us. God made a covenant with Abraham and told him that he was going to be a father of many nations. Sarah probably in her humanity was like, okay, well, you know, let, let me help this along. And I think we often, we often look at that like, oh gosh, she just didn't have enough faith. Y'all 25 years. The Lord told me not yet eight years ago concerning the husband, eight years. <laughs> and a lot has gone on. And I was thinking, hey, hey if I had known eight years, y'all probably would have acted a fool for at least at least a good six. I, I'm going to keep it straight up with you. <laughs> keep it 100. Because I'm like, if I had known it was going to be this long, and it still has not happened, but I still believe because I see things, I read the Bible, and I believe what the Lord has said. But I, I'm just going to keep it real. After 25 years, I've been like, oh, yeah, let me go on. And I, I probably would have been trying to do it myself as well. And that's what Sarah did. And we can't fault her for that because she just, she was having a human reaction to a promise. And keep in mind, the Lord had made the promise to Abraham. It's not like he had came and talked to her about anything yet. So at, th at this point, so she was like, good, cool. Let me go get Hagar. Let me go have a baby, uh, have my husband have a baby with her. And of, co of course, all of us are like, that's completely crazy. But when you are desperate, when you are just at your last thread of hope, you're like, let me figure something out. And I believe that's where she was at. But you know what? God is so good because that's not where he left the story in. So either way it goes, yes, yeah, she has a baby. Uh, uh, Abraham has a baby with Hagar. Hagar and um, Sarah have some beef. Sarah's like, listen, get up, get up out of here because you acting like you over me now because Hagar was like, I had a baby. You didn't. <laughs> um, so all of that, all of that. And even after Hagar has Ishmael or Ishmael, however you want to pronounce it, y'all know, do what you need to do. Look up how to pronounce the name. Um, God still came through. And this is actually when God changes Sarah's name and he changes her name and says in Genesis 17 verse 15, then God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And indeed, I will give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. I want you to keep in mind, this is after she's been like, okay, well, I, I'm done. Let me, let me figure, th let me figure this out. I'm gonna go ahead and have uh, Abraham, uh, Abram at the time sleep with Hagar and we gonna get a baby that way. The Lord speaks blessings over her and changes her name after that. Like that lets me know that that gives me encouragement. That gives me hope that I can do some dumb stuff, but because the Lord is so good and he who promises faithful, he's still going to uphold his word. It's not about me. And again, she had a very human reaction. We've had very human reactions to a lot of stuff lately. And the Lord is still faithful to fulfill his promise. And through that, even that, like, you know, Abraham was like, okay, well, cool. I'll, you know, Ishmael will be the, you know, the descendants that it will come from. But God said in verse 19, but God said, no, <laughs> come on. But God said, no, but Sarah, your wife will bear you a son and you should call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him. If this doesn't make you have some hope, I don't know what does. And then it gets even better. Y'all It gets even better because in, in verse, uh, let's see. In verse 18, I mean, excuse me, in chapter 18, uh, God promises Isaac, and he even confirms the promise of Isaac coming. And that's when um, some, I guess you could say some travelers, but it's actually the, uh, it was the angel of the Lord coming to visit. And they're talking to, um, they're talking to Abraham. And then in verse 9, in chapter 18, verse 9, they said, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, they're in the tent. And he says, I will surely return to you at this time next year. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door. Sarah, I, I'm liking her more and more. She's probably like looking out the tent like, now, now, now say what now? Now you, you say I'm going to do what? Sarah was at this point, I think Sarah's probably 89 because then they tell her the next year that she's going to have a baby. So, and she had a baby at 90. So she's probably 89 years old. Now I want you to think about this. You are being told that at 89 years old, you're going to have a baby. And so... Sarah laughed to herself saying, in verse 12, laughed to herself saying, after I become old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. And the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Shall I indeed bear a child when I am so old? 
Is anything too difficult for the Lord? <laughs> I love that. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Really? Like, if you are hoping for something, if you are praying for something, believing in God for something, for one, throw your expectations out the window because God can do it in his way and in his timing. For me, it's like, okay, there's so much. Lord, just bless me with a new job. There's a, there's a lot that has happened. So I know that he's working in my life. I know that he's working behind the scenes even when I can't see it. And so even when I feel like, gosh, Lord, I'm, I'm afraid to hope because I don't want to be disappointed. He will send confirmation. He will provide knowledge for you to know like I have not forgotten about you my dear daughter my dear son I still have wonderful things planned for you if you just have faith that you continue to trust just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening so even here Sarah's like she's being told from from the Lord like hey she's overhearing it like you're going to have a child and she's still like <laughs> you're right the Lord's like why why are you laughing Did, didn't I just say that you was going to have a child is anything too hard for the Lord I mean, come on. I'm like, Lord, come talk to me. Because Lord knows I've kind of been like, nah, that's probably not going to happen. And then Lord will send confirmation. And I, that's what I want this to be for you today. I want you, you to look at this as confirmation that Lord is going to do what he said he would do. He is not a man that he should lie. He is going to do what he said he would do. I want to give you some encouragement as I've been studying hope and I've been like, Lord, you're going to have to help me with this because sometimes I feel like it's a little harder than what I imagined. It's been a longer wait. A lot has happened in my life recently, um, but he's so good because there's so many wonderful things to be grateful for. But I want you to think about hope. And he gave me Romans 15, 13, and it says, I pray that God, the source of hope, fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So as I read that, I was like, okay, what is that telling me about hope? That's telling me that one hope comes from God. I, I cannot have it. I always looked at it as like, well, I need to have hope. I need to have hope. No, hope comes from God. And joy and peace accompany hope. So when I allow myself to hope, I can actually have joy and peace about my situation. I can actually walk in contentment. And then the Holy Spirit's power is required for confident hope. So again, the Lord sent his helper. He sent his helper to, to provide you with help in having hope. He doesn't even leave it up to us to try to have this amazing hope. He says, I have provided a helper for you to help you have confident hope. So you need God's spirit in, living inside of you. It's not something that you can get on your own. You have to read the scripture and let that speak to you. Because also it was, um, in Romans 15, 4, it says, Such things were written in the scripture long ago to teach us. And the scripture gives us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently. And that's exactly what the story of Sarah did. I love that she had very human reactions. I love that she was straight up like, you know what? She did some, made some dumb decisions. Like, oh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and fix this myself. Because if I, if I need um, a baby and I want Abraham to have a baby, then I'm gonna need to do it my way. And the Lord still blessed her, changed her name afterwards, made a promise to her, and then brought her the child that she so desired when she was freaking 90 years old. And I think some people write these stories off as like, oh, well, that's just, that's what the Lord did back in the Old Testament. No, the Lord can do that in your life right now, right here, today, if you would just believe and allow yourself to have hope. So I'm going to pray for us because sometimes we need the hope. Lord, some things did not happen for us that we thought were going to happen. But Father, I ask that you just bless us and infuse us with new hope, with hope that just surpasses anything that we can imagine, Lord. Because your word says you were able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could dare ask think or imagine. So Lord, we are standing in hope today. We hope that you are going to do what you said that you were going to do because we know that he who promises is faithful. And we just thank you. We thank you right now for the manifestation of the promise in our lives. So I ask that you are encouraged today. Again, I wrote a short story about this over on carrielee.com. Please check it out and be sure to like and subscribe. Be blessed.